Welcome to the Tough Decisions Network. This is our special Saturday edition called Step Up Your Game with Dan. I'm your host, Dan Hanford, and I'll be discussing topics to help you make better decisions to increase your productivity, increase your sales, and improve your overall marketing. Visit toughdecisions.net to sign up for our free weekly entrepreneur email. Before we get started, let's hear from one of our sponsors. Want daily interviews with real estate investors and none of the fluff? Go to bestevershow.com where Joe Fairless interviews real estate investors and entrepreneurs daily about their best advice ever. Go to bestevershow.com. On today's Step Up Your Game with Dan episode, we are going to be talking about referrals. And we're talking about how to get referrals from your customers, your patients, your clients, your donors, your investors, and etc. So we're going to talk through 12 ideas on how to implement a strategy or multiple strategies on how to make sure you are getting referrals in your business. So the first thing you have to do is make sure that you decide to act on getting referrals. Many times we keep on talking about things and talking about getting referrals, but you must make the decision to actually start to get referrals and make sure that you get your team on board for getting these referrals as well. So number one, get to the point where you have decided to start getting referrals. Number two, you want to make sure that now that you've decided to get referrals for your business, that you start to set some objective measures, some definitive objective measures so that you can keep your team on task of getting these referrals. You have something to measure this objective, so you're measuring it constantly. I suggest looking at these metrics at least on a weekly basis, sometimes depending on your business, maybe even on a daily basis. But make sure you have things in place to keep your team accountable, reward them for getting these referrals, and reward them for asking customers, and make sure that every week or depending on your business, every day they're filling out what I call a weekly report, which is a weekly referral report, so that they can make sure that they keep it top of mind every single day and every single week. Number three, you want to make sure you have a high energy environment within your office. It's very, very hard to create any type of large numbers of referrals if your office is low in energy. So when you're starting to think about your office, maybe you need to change some things. Maybe you need to change the decorations or the lighting, or maybe it's dirty. Maybe you need to start to clean it up a little bit and get it more organized. The more organized it is, the more clean it is, the lighting that can impact the energy in an office as well as the decorations. If you're building out an office, keep those in mind to make sure you have a high energy office because it will create a more referral type environment. And so if you already have an office built out, you don't have to go move, but you can look at your existing setup and see what are some things that you can do right now to make it more of a high energy office. Number four, become excellent in everything that you do. Now that might sound simple or easy, but it really isn't. You need to make sure that everything you do is excellent. You cannot simply be good in business and expect to get referrals. You must be better than good in order to motivate and deserve those referrals. Disney even has a definition of excellence. It's called doing what you do so well that people can't resist telling others about you. And that leads us into number five, which is the wow experience. Anybody who's worked for me knows about the wow experience because I talk about it with every new hire and they must understand what the wow experience is. The wow experience is somebody that comes into your office, your business, your restaurant, wherever they are entering your business. Even if you're a service business and you're going to people's houses, you have to make sure you implement this wow experience. And the wow experience is somebody who experiences your business and they walk away from that experience and that environment and they turn around and they go, wow, that was amazing. I cannot wait to tell my friend that I found this new place. Now, we've all had experiences that were the opposite of the wow experience where, for example, we go into a restaurant and we have a really bad waiter or waitress. The food is bad and the music is bad and the environment is bad. And it just does an awful, awful experience. You just know that business is not going to continue to survive. And guess what we do there? We walk out of that business and we make a mental note to make sure we tell everybody not to go to that business. And that's what you're trying to avoid. You want to make sure you avoid that type of an environment in a business and turn it around so that they walk out and they have that wow experience because people who experience that will walk out 
and they'll try to find the next person that they come in contact with and refer them over to your office. Whenever we all go to a restaurant and we have a good experience, we're always like, oh, who can I tell? Maybe I should go post this on Facebook about how good of an experience that I had. And so keep that in mind. Keep that wow experience in mind. There's certain things that you can do to implement that wow experience. One of the things that we do in our office for that wow experience is we provide things that are above and beyond what a traditional office would provide. So we're in the non-surgical orthopedic medical office space for the majority of my businesses. And so with those five clinics, when a new patient walks in, they're greeted by name. The staff must know that new patient's name when they walk in that door so that they can greet them by name. They look them in the eyes. They give them a nice smile. And then when they bring them back to give them their paperwork, They bring them back into a room and let them sit down and fill out their paperwork, and then they provide them with water. Now, they don't just provide them with any water. They're not just getting Walmart from, you know, Great Value, which is the Walmart brand, or, you know, some off-labeled water. They're getting really nice, high-quality Fiji water. We spend extra money to make sure we go above and beyond because we want people to experience that wow experience in our office. And that's one of the things that we do. We also have a coffee bar set up in each one of our offices. So when they're in the waiting room, instead of just having to sit in the waiting room and, you know, waiting for their appointment, or maybe they're there and they've brought a patient in and they want to, you know, sit in the waiting room while they're being treated or whatever the case may be, you know, they're able to enjoy some coffee or some tea and, you know, enjoy that environment in the office just a little bit more. So keep that in mind implement the wow experience, find ways to go above and beyond for your customers even before they even start to experience you as your business or whatever the service may be. Number six is getting a team commitment on the wow experience. You must, in order to have that wow experience, get your team on board. In order to stimulate those referrals by that wow experience, it must be the number one thing for every one of your staff members. They must be on board and every person on your team should always be alert for any opportunity to make your customers have just a little bit better experience and sometimes a lot better experience. Just finding certain things. And if you explain to your team what that wow experience is, why you want that wow experience in place, why they want that wow experience in place, they will be on board and they will do things beyond anything that you can think of right now to make your customers have a better experience. Number seven is training your customers. You should be training your customers to send you referrals. Don't wait for them to experience results. Don't wait for them to say, hey, I really had a good time or I really enjoyed this meal or I really you know, and, and, you know, liked the environment of the business or whatever environment it is. Don't wait for them to have those results. One of the best times to ask for referrals is on that first encounter when they first experience you and they can now say, oh, I had a good time or I enjoyed it or whatever. You know, that's the time where you start asking referrals. Even if you haven't sold them anything yet, start asking for some of those referrals. Get them used to sending you referrals and recommending them to your friends. Because guess what? When they start to recommend you to their friends, their friends are now coming to you and they're pretty much pre-sold by their friend on coming to you for your service or your product or treatment or whatever the case is. And it's a lot easier to get those people in your door and sell them on something or provide them with a service because they've been referred to you by somebody who has already experienced it and they're already sold. They're a lot easier people to work with. And guess what? Friends that are referred by friends refer more friends. And so it kind of creates this, you know, almost like a multi-level referral network, if you will. And everybody kind of just continues to refer more and more and more. Now, number eight. This is something that's going to take a little bit more time, but you can definitely delegate this to a staff member or a team member that likes to write. But I would suggest making a newsletter, a monthly newsletter to your customers, your clients, your donors, your, you know, investors, you know, whatever the case is, you must have a newsletter to those people because it allows you to stay top of mind with them. And if you don't already have that newsletter, you should create one. And in this newsletter, you should create a list of people on there. You should have a list of who referred new clients that month and also list out those new clients and then highlight a client of the month. And in that client of the month, you need to show or have a story behind that client of the month that receives some really good results personally and that interesting story associated with it. Your patients, your clients, your customers, they want to see your information day in and day out. So month by month, you need to be giving them that information. And the more they see referral patterns month after month in those newsletters, it will establish that as a norm in your business that you want referrals from them. And so that leads us to number nine. Number nine is getting more than one referral. 
a lot of times we'll ask sometimes we'll sometimes ask for referrals from patients or clients or customers and once we get one referral we stop we stop and we go oh they sent us somebody so that's all they're going to send but no the client or the person who refers is more likely to refer more people and somebody else than it's somebody who has never referred before it's a lot harder to get somebody to refer than it is to just ask somebody who's already referred somebody for more referrals so just make sure that you ask, even if they've only sent you one people, ask for the second or the third or the fourth referral because that's just going to continue to give you more and more referrals. And many times, once they give you one good quality referral, the next referral is going to be even better. Now, number 10, you should set up a system in place to recognize and reward, reward your customers for referring to your business. You should have those referral rewards and mechanisms in place. So when somebody refers you business, then one thing you should do after the first referral is send them a handwritten thank you note. Now, these days, nobody does this anymore. And so it's a complete shock to them when they open up their mailbox and they get a thank you note from you saying, hey, thanks for sending this person in. I can't tell you how many times I've sent somebody to somebody else and, I've, and I didn't get a thank you card or a thank you note or even a text message. Just, hey, thanks for sending this person to me. It really means a lot. And guess what? I just lose interest. I just I just don't want to send anybody else there anymore because I'm trying to help this person out and they don't seem to be appreciating it. So make sure that you appreciate and you recognize and you reward your customers for referring. You can always delegate these handwritten notes to somebody else in your office. You don't have to be the one sitting there right now, you know, 100 thank you notes a month. Hopefully you're getting that many referrals a month so you have that kind of a problem, but you would be better off to hire somebody to write those 100 thank you notes than not do it at all. It would be worth the time and the money spent on having somebody else do that for you because those 100 referrals that you got will continue to refer more people the more you can cultivate that and the more you can do. If they continue to refer people to your business, then consider sending them an unexpected gift. It doesn't have to be anything big or fancy, but a nice little thank you gift is great. One of the things that I like to do is, is I like to send a little gift card to Starbucks or you know some other place in town. I'll just you know get a bunch of five dollar or ten dollar gift cards and send them a thank you and say, hey, thanks for sending Sally over to the office. Really appreciate that. So you can always always give them those kind of unexpected gifts. And of course, as they continue to refer, you can create a board in your office, like a, like a, like a thank you board of people who have referred you know, into your office. And then also maybe enter them into a, a drawing of a, of a client of the month contest or, or a referral you know person or customer or, or patient of the month. That's, a, that's always a good idea. It sparks that. It constantly keeps it at top of mind. And it kind of leads us into number 11. If you want referrals, you must create quality referral material. Okay. Provide your customers, your existing customers with material that they can have so that they can give something to your prospective customer or somebody that they want to refer so they can have that information. It lowers that barrier of entry and it makes it easier. You have to make sure it looks good though, because if your existing collateral doesn't look good and it's kind of cheesy and kind of, you know, you know, worn out and not up to date, then somebody's not going to want to send that to somebody else. So you need to look at that and go, are you really proud of the image that that material portrays about your business. And if you are, great. If not, scrap it, go to back to a designer, go to upwork.com, find a virtual assistant that can be your, one of your designers and get them to create you a new type of collateral that you can send, a brochure, a new business card, a new referral coupon, you know, whatever it is, create that content so that they have something to give to their friends and family members and coworkers so that they can start to refer even more people to you. The easier you make it for those customers, the more people they will refer to you. And the last thing here is, is number 12. This is one thing that I like a lot. It's called events. Scheduling events for those existing customers to give them an excuse to bring people to you to give you those referrals. You know, like client appreciation days, doing food drives on Thanksgiving and Christmas, or doing like an annual barbecue every summer or a fall festival, or, you know, even throughout the year when there's not an event surrounding it or like an actual, you know, season or, you know, holiday surrounding it. You can do something like lunch and learn events, you know, create some events that allows people to bring customers to you. You know, those are always good ideas to have those types of events in place. So let's just recap these real quickly. Number one, you must decide to act to get referrals. Number two, set definitive objective measures once you've decided to act to get referrals. Number three, create a high energy office environment. Number four, become excellent in everything that you do. Number five, implement the wow experience in your office. And number six, get a team commitment to go through and go forward with the wow experience. 
Number seven, train your customers. Number eight, newsletter to your customers. Sending a newsletter to your customers is very important and is a very good idea. Number nine, getting more than one referral. Again, if you want to get referrals, ask for more than one referral from people who have already sent people to you. Number 10, recognize and reward your customers when they send people to and when they refer people to you. Number 11, create quality referral material. Make sure your customers have good material to be able to pass out, to be able to recommend you to their family, their friends, and their coworkers. And then finally, number 12 is scheduling events for your existing patients so they have an excuse to be able to bring their family and friends with you. So I've given you several ideas on how to implement strategies to get referrals from your customers. You should now take some time with your team to create a plan to implement these strategies. Always go after the lowest hanging fruit. You've heard that before. The lowest hanging fruit is easier to get to. And your referrals are called low-hanging fruit. So make sure you don't ignore that. Make sure you're asking for those referrals. Again, thank you so much for listening to this episode of Step Up Your Game with Dan. Remember to always be improving your sales and productivity for success. Until next time, have an amazing day. Thank you for listening to the Tough Decisions Network. Be sure to visit toughdecisions.net to gain access to show notes for this episode and to join our free weekly entrepreneur email where we will send you news about the latest technology for your business, inspiring quotes, and the latest books for entrepreneurs. That's toughdecisions.net.